Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, a lot of you know that a website or a guy that had a big impact on my life was Chris from Good Looking Loser. A lot of you are obviously here, you know, having come with me on this journey where maybe you started from his content, you came along for the ride, and you're still here now with me. He's someone that really, 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 like I said, had a really big impact on my life. His website helped me give myself permission. I guess you could say he gave me permission, but he helped me give myself permission to go for some of the goals that I had and to not feel guilty about some of the things that I wanted if they were a little bit non-mainstream. His website focused mostly on getting laid, having sex, and it was a very like masculine male oriented website. And I went through this beautiful journey where I, I learned that like sex isn't this weird thing that I'm not allowed, or it doesn't have to be this thing that brings me a lot of shame. And if I want something sexual, if I want something casual, as long as I'm honest and upfront about it, it can be a beautiful experience for me, a beautiful experience for the women. So he helped me get to that point. And, you know, a lot of you at the moment are in that same journey where you're like, dude, I just want to get laid. Like, I want to prove to myself that I can do this. I want to prove that women will like me. I want to prove that I'm allowed to have sex. His website was such a wonderful safe haven from some of the guilt and shame that a lot of people have around sex and especially casual sex. So what we're going to do here is, you know, a lot of you know that his website is, I don't know if it's going to be permanently done, but it's temporarily done. It has been for about six months right now. And so what we're doing here is I'm going through some of the articles that I read on his website that really had a positive impact on my life. And I'm kind of just reading them out and reacting to them, kind of adding my own flair, my own little flavor in there, maybe saying some things that, you know, I not disagree with now, but some extra context that I would add. And a lot of the concepts on his website, I'm going to particularly pick articles to react to that apply to more than just sex. Again, his website was entirely about sex. I guess you could say self-improvement as well, and obviously oriented entirely at men. But if you're a woman listening, I promise you, even the articles that seem like they're only about sex, there's such a beautiful, warm message of like self-improvement there and permission to go for your goals, no matter what they are. I've said this a million times. I think that Chris, if he still was writing now, would just be writing a self-improvement blog or YouTube channel. And a lot of his new content, because he has a YouTube channel, a lot of the content that he's done now is a lot more just like mindset oriented. And so I could definitely see him being someone who's like a life coach or something like that, or doing what I'm doing, you know, just helping people with whatever goals they might have. So even if you're a woman, even if you're a guy that doesn't care about getting laid at this point, you have other goals or other things you want to work on. I promise you this article that we're going to react to right now is very freaking relevant, it has a very like sexual context, a very sexual headline, but it's relevant no matter what your goals are. And while I've got you right now, now is the, if you've been thinking of signing up for the coaching program, now is the absolute perfect time. You have four days left to grab my amazing coaching deal, which is 18 weeks of coaching instead of the usual 12. I will leave a link in the description below to that. Let's get to this goddamn article. So this article is one of my favorites and it's called The Comfortable Life of the Undersexed Male, Why Most Guys Won't Get a Lot of Pussy. And again, if you have no interest in getting laid or if you're a woman, this article absolutely applies to you and your general goals. I wrote recently a very similar article to this one, actually, a similar concept. It's over on my website. It's called Why Most People Quit Self-Improvement. It's because they're comfortably uncomfortable. So go and check that article out as well. I will leave a link in the description to that. But it's a very similar concept to this one. My article was much more, you know, again, this one was much more just a general one about self-improvement, whereas Good Looking Losers article here is more about sex predominantly. But the, the concept is basically the same. And the general, you know, maybe I'm spoiling it here, but whatever. The general concept of this article and my own article is most people are very comfortable in their life. And our brains, generally speaking, seek out comfort and security and safety. And so a lot of the reasons why, or one of the biggest reasons why people don't achieve massive big goals, you know, whatever those goals might be for, for them, whatever's important to them, the reason the average person is exactly that average is because average is pretty fucking comfortable. Like it's not bad to be average. I think most of us here in this community are here because we want something more than average. We want to be amazing. We want to do some wild stuff. We want to have beautiful, big, exciting, adventurous lives. But the average person is quite comfortable 
having just an average life. Think about it. It's like your bills are paid. You get more than enough food. Your entertainment is around the clock with the internet and phones and, and laptops and shit like that. You're essentially in a form of the matrix. And I don't mean that in a way of like, oh, wow, the matrix is controlling us, but like, it's a comfortable, safe matrix. I think that message gets lost in the matrix, in the movie, the matrix. People see that as like, and the movie itself presents it as like a form of control. And it's like, I mean, kind of, but it also could just be seen as a form of comfort. Like the matrix, you know, within the matrix movie, the matrix was set up to keep humans comfortable so that they wouldn't want to leave the matrix. Like it's literally set up for comfort. It's just that you guys and girls listening to this want something more than that. So the reason the average guy doesn't have a lot of sex, the reason the average woman doesn't have an amazing sex life, the reason the average person is a little bit overweight, maybe they just work a job that's okay, but it's not that exciting. They're not super hardcore passionate about it is because that's really comfortable. It's nice and safe. Nothing bad will really happen to you. Now, we want something more and that's beautiful, but the average person is quite comfortable. So let's read this goddamn amazing article. And this was one of my favorite articles on his website. So the reason might surprise you despite popular school. Let me make this a little bit bigger. Despite popular school, underachievement is not caused by the usual suspects, lack of work ethic, lack of opportunity, or lack of talent. The reason most people don't succeed with women or much in their lives, yeah, and again, this article applies to pretty much any goal that you have, is far more obvious and far more pathetic. I know what your biggest obstacle is. It's the reason why you'll never get your sex life together or reach your dating goals or any other goals, whatever they might be. In fact, I'll go so far as to say it may be the same reason that you never have much financial success, never transform your face body into a package that girls ask to take photos with, never experience fucking a 19 year old hottie with a dick undeniably too fat for her pussy. <laughs> I told you guys and girls, he's very like sexual. It's part of why I liked him so much. It was very appealing to me that he would just like use words that were like politically incorrect. And he'd just be like, I want to stick my dick in a pussy. And I was like, there was something unbelievably honest and raw about his website and about him as a human being. So I was so drawn to him and his site, or you may, or it may even explain why you don't really have much fun with your life. We'll discuss that another time though. It's not just your problem. In hindsight, it was my biggest obstacle too. It was something I struggled with and still do to this day, although to a far lesser degree. It's the reason I was a late bloomer, the lonesome bodybuilder, remarkably content for being in a perpetual state of mild depression. And yeah, he started his website because he was quite depressed. He had an elite body. He was like a bodybuilder. He looked like a freaking God, but he wasn't really taking action in his life. He wasn't talking to women. He wasn't, you know, making friends. He was very lonely. He just put all of his time and energy into bodybuilding almost as a way to, or part of it, part of the appeal for him was to almost like check out of society and just keep himself nice and comfortable. There's a weird comfort with like being a bodybuilder, at least for a lot of bodybuilders that I know. I'm friends with a couple of them. We need to acknowledge the cause so you don't waste your 20s and 30s and wonder what happened. At the very least, you'll know what to blame it in if life doesn't work out for you. I wish I'd heard this in my 20s. It, I probably, I would probably have five years of my life back. The comfortable life of the undersexed male why most guys won't get a lot of pussy. And again, if that isn't your goal, you can rename that or edit that to the comfortable life of the average person or the comfortable life of the unfulfilled person. There you go, call it that. So what is the problem? As you sit in the comfort of your own home or apartment reading this blog and many others, or in this case, watching this YouTube video, enjoying the free conveniences that would have been considered unattainable, unattainable luxuries just five years ago, often pondering your sexual past, reality, and future. It's time you're told the truth of why large amounts of pussy, or whatever goal you have, will continue to evade you. Believe it or not, for most guys who read Good Looking Loser or watch my YouTube channel, it has little to do with a lack of sex appeal, social freedom, swag factor, or confidence. The problem is, you live a comfortable life. Admit it. Perhaps you have big dreams that stress you out from time to time or some monthly bills that further irritate this anxiety. Perhaps you may even successfully or have even successfully convinced yourself that you are deeply insecure, or at least more than most guys, even though the fact is you simply just take life more seriously. 
yeah, that's a that's another article of his that I've reacted to and done a video on. Basically, the idea there is a lot of the time we think, man, I'm so insecure. I'm so fucked up. I have all of these problems. It's like, no, you just are more aware of the things in yourself that you want to improve. So you don't have more mental issues than other people. You're not more insecure. You're not more fucked up than the average person. You just care more. The average person is quite happy with themselves and with their life. And they're not, they might not be fully happy, but like, they're not sitting there going, what can I improve? And if you're watching this channel, you are into self-improvement. So you're just going to be more aware of your own insecurities or your own areas where you could improve. So you don't have more problems. You're just more aware of your problems. Regardless of your socioeconomic class, I love that word, socioeconomic, with a few exceptions, if you were resourceful enough to explore far enough into the deep and creepy part of the internet and find good looking loser or my website, and I don't think my website is creepy, although some people would say it is, but it's more that if you're into the hardcore self-improvement parts of the internet, I'm willing to bet that you live a fairly comfortable life with an excess of conveniences and distractions that you regularly indulge in despite vowing to be productive. Yeah, we all do. Or well, most of us do. Good looking loser, after all, is adamant, admittedly. My brain is not working this morning, ladies and gentlemen. I am a little bit tired. After all, is admittedly a distraction from what you should be doing. And I'm someone that doesn't say what you should be doing, but the point is exactly the same. Like you will have ideas in your head of like, you know, I want to be working on my goals. And then, you know, you can literally just be distracting yourself by watching my YouTube channel. This right now is a distraction. Like, would I prefer you to watch this video? or go outside and work on your goals. I would give anything for you to go outside and actually work on your goals. And take this as a challenge. Any of you listening, if you're feeling ballsy enough, or what's the female equivalent of ballsy? If you're feeling vagina-y enough, <laughs> if you're feeling ballsy or vagina-y enough, turn this video off and go and actually take some action. And then you can come back and watch it or never come back and ever watch it ever again and just take action. Like either would be beautiful, but I'd rather you be taking action right now. So take that as a challenge. Leave a comment like, hey, Andy, I actually paused the video when you said to pause the video and I went and did this. I went and talked to a woman or I went to the gym or I went and hung out with my friends to do something productive. And yeah, I would love that. So your life is simply too comfortable for you to make the necessary physical and psychological changes to really make the big changes in your sex life or life in general. Yeah. So let alone life in general, let alone entire life. Yeah. And that's the thing. Like if your life is pretty comfortable right now, which most of us, our lives are pretty comfortable. Like none of us are on the battlefield of a war or something. Some of you might be, but why would you be watching this video? If you're watching this video, or in my case, if you were reading this article, your life is like pretty decent. The fact that you're even able to sit on YouTube and watch this means that life is going pretty okay. You might be unhappy, you might be suffering and all of that. You might even be depressed, but like you're in a position where you have the basic comforts of your life likely sorted out, right? Like you probably aren't sitting there going, holy fuck, where is my next meal coming from? You might be, and to any of those people out there, like I empathize, I understand. I've been in that position. I'm friends with a couple of homeless people. I do get it. But like for most of us listening, we probably know what we're going to eat today. We might have to struggle to get it, but we know that we're going to be, our basic needs are going to be handled. We probably have a roof to sleep under. Again, you might not be watching my YouTube channel. If you didn't, you'd probably be sorting those things out. And so life is like decently comfortable. There's nothing insanely wrong. We might tell ourselves stories of like, this part of my life sucks. This is bad. This is wrong. I have to fix this. Oh my God, I can't keep living like this. But like, you're not actually fighting for survival. And there's a lot of comfort with that. That's that's beautiful comfort. But that comfort is part of the reason why we often don't make big changes in our lives. And there's almost this weird thing of like, people are, are afraid of being uncomfortable, or afraid of getting too frustrated or afraid of getting too upset and angry and like, you know, hitting rock bottom, but rock bottom and not that you need to hit rock bottom, but like hitting rock bottom or getting overly frustrated or just being so uncomfortable that you make these radical changes can be a really beautiful thing. I myself, a lot of the changes that I've made have been because I was in a position where I was like, I'm so uncomfortable now that I want to change something. And that was kind of the point that I made in my article. Again, my article was called why most people quit self-improvement comfortably uncomfortable. I talked about the fact that sometimes you get to this point of like complete discomfort that you're like, oh my God, no, today, like now is the right moment. Now is the time I'm going to change. Like, and there's this weird thing where, you know, if you're overly comfortable, you're almost, 
you don't know what you're missing out on. Like you, you know what you're missing out on, but the, the discomfort is not so, uh, compulsive that it like it, it, it propels you to actually change something. You're sitting there with enough comfort that you go, I could change, but I'll do it when, you know, the time is right. How many of you have said, you know, when I do like, when I talk about the coaching and stuff, how many times is, have, have you sort of said, or have people said to me, you know, I'll, I'll do it later. I'll sign up for the coaching. I have the money. I really want to do this, but like, I'll do it in a couple of months. I'll do it later. Or how many times have you thought, you know, I could go to the gym. Yeah, I'll, I'll do it on New Year's like day. Like that'll be my new year's resolution. I'll start it later. That's just because you're comfortable. And so there are different ways to push yourself beyond that comfort. You know, I like to use the method. My favorite method is just taking a little baby step. That's why I say to you guys and girls all the time, like you're sitting there with this feeling of like, I don't want to start my goal yet because, you know, essentially because it's scary, but you'll say the reasons why now's not the right time. I don't have the money. I can't do this. I'll go to the gym later. I'm just busy with work. Like, uh, you know, my kids need me, whatever reason it is. But the easiest answer or the one that I found that works the most is if I can just get you to take one little baby step, one tiny little thing. So if you say, I can't go to the gym because I just don't have time. Okay, can you just go for a five minute walk today? Well, yeah, I guess I could do that. Okay, do that. Start with that. Build that into a habit. And then after you've done that for a week or two when it's easy, now we can go for a 10 minute walk and then a 15 minute work. And we slowly build up the courage to be able to just like raise that bar little bit by a little bit until we do get to a point where we're like, screw it, I should just go to the gym. And there are no shoulds obviously, but you know, I wanna go to the gym. I'm gonna go, like fuck it, I'm really scared, but I'm gonna go. I've just spent the last like two months just going for walks and that's been pretty nice. I get to smell the fresh air, I get to see the birds and the bees and hopefully the birds and the bees aren't fucking each other. I don't understand where that metaphor comes from. The birds and the bees, it's like the birds and the bees don't screw each other, but maybe they do, maybe I'm wrong, I don't know, but you get the point, so. Let's keep reading. Why stress yourself out when you can just jerk off to a girl hotter than anyone you could speak to? Yeah, so he's obviously talking about porn there. Why test your self-esteem when you know it's fragile? Why leave the house when staying home makes you feel like less of a loner? Yeah. <laughs> And there's this weird paradox that happens sometimes or often when we throw ourselves into self-improvement. Let's say you want to lose weight. You start going for walks. Maybe you start going to the gym. Maybe you count your calories or something. And you're acutely aware now that it's like way harder to lose weight than it was to just eat whatever the fuck you want. And so it's almost like things become more difficult when you start, even though the whole reason you were doing it was because you were so uncomfortable with what you were, like the life you were living. And so self-improvement can be a little challenging at the start. It can be quite difficult at the start. You know what I mean? And so as he says here, like, you know, when you're at home, just like playing video games, yes, you're somewhat aware of like, man, I don't really have any friends. And I kind of wish I did. Like you're aware of that. But then when you actually go outside and start trying to make friends, it just becomes even more apparent because now you're actually paying attention to the fact that you don't have friends. Now it's a problem. It's not a problem, but it's just something you overcome. But now you're seeing it as like a problem that you have to solve. And you're now more aware of the fact that you were that you are lonely or that you don't have a lot of friends because before you could ignore it. You could self-medicate it. You could play video games. And that's what most people do, right? Like the average person just sits there on their phone, like doom scrolling looking at a thousand different TikToks that they don't care about, flicking through Instagram and just self-medicating and, and almost like drowning themselves out with just staring at a pix at pixels on a screen or alcohol or porn or video games or Netflix or whatever else it might be. And those things aren't bad, but I'm saying we often throw ourselves into self-medication with those things so that we don't have to face the fact that we feel a little bit lonely or we don't have the money that we would like or we don't have the sex life that we would like or we feel stuck in a relationship or whatever it might be. And so when we start saying, okay, I'm going to actually improve these things, now you're paying attention. Now you're starting to notice the feelings of loneliness and you're really noticing them and you're not self-medicating them anymore or not as much. They just sit there and you feel that loneliness. You feel that complete lack of other people in your life, whatever that might mean for you. And it becomes way more apparent. And a lot of people, as I said in my article here, why most people quit self-improvement, the, the main summary of this article I wrote is a lot of people will start self-improvement and then in the first couple of weeks or months, it feels like they feel worse, at least before they had their self-medication and they could kind of hide and pretend that, hide their issue and pretend it didn't exist. But now they're facing up to it. Now they're actually facing the fact that they feel lonely or, you know, they don't have anyone in their life that they can share something special with. They don't have any sex. They don't have money, whatever it is that they want. 
Now they're aware that they don't have those things because they're noticing it. And that's uncomfortable as hell. And a lot of people just go running straight back to Netflix or video games or whatever their self-medication of choices, they go back to their comfortable life and they go, oh my God, that self-improvement thing was so scary. That's not for me. And how many times have you heard, you know, maybe you haven't heard, but I've heard a lot of people say, the gym's just not for me. Well, how do you know? Well, I went three times and I just, I felt so sore afterwards. And I just, I felt like everyone was looking at me. I felt like I didn't belong. It's just, it's not for me. And it's like, no, it, it, it is for you. You just didn't stick it out for long enough. You just quit too early. So I can understand what he says when he means, or, or what he means when he says, you know, leaving the house can actually make you feel like more of a loner. Like staying home actually can make you feel a little bit better because you're like, well, at least I have my video games and my waifu and my anime and my porn. For any women listening, you know, you will have your own self-medications of choice too. Women have porn but it's, it's not usually pornography. It's usually like stories and books and stuff like that. For age 20 and 30 something men and women to 20 and outside those age ranges, 21st century mediocrity isn't particularly uncomfortable. In fact, many secretly enjoy it. Yeah. Do any of you remember, I'm sure you do remember 2020 and 2021 and 2022, like all the lockdowns and stuff. The thing that surprised me most, cause I'm someone that loves freedom. I'm someone that loves being able to go outside, being able to talk to other human beings, being able to see their beautiful smiles, being able to interact with my friends and all of that. I love freedom. It's very important to me. I'm very much a libertarian at heart. I want everyone to be free and happy. It surprised me. And I'm curious if it surprised any of you, how many people, I wouldn't even just say secretly, but openly enjoyed the fact that like, oh, we can't leave the house now. And you could leave the house. I left the house, but like you get fines and police and all of that kind of stuff and people harass you and all of that. But like, you know, people saying like, I can't leave the house. How many people like openly rejoiced at that? That surprised me. And it makes sense. You know, it, it, it took me a little while, but eventually it made sense. I was like, oh, they just like their comfortable life. And now they have a really convenient excuse to just sit at home and do the things that they were doing before, but they felt guilty about it before. You know, they felt guilty staying at home and having no friends and not going outside and, and not having a sex life and not having friends and all of that. They felt guilty with that stuff. But now they get to like put on a little hat and wave a flag and say like, I'm supporting everybody. I'm a good person. Like I'm doing my part. And they got to feel good about what they were doing, virtuous even. And yeah, that really surprised me at first. I was like, damn, there must be a lot of people that are just sort of sitting at home. This is very much a reflection or it's it's bringing to the surface that a lot of these people are probably very unhappy. And this for the first time is a chance for them not to feel unhappy anymore and to feel, like I said, virtuous and good about what they're doing, which is sitting at home doing nothing, binging and watching Netflix. One of my friends showed me like, you know, they all ended up, his, his workplace, they all ended up working at home. And he said, man, it's weird. Basically every single meeting that we have on Zoom, which is, you know, like every day, he said like, bro, they will like actively brag about how much alcohol they consumed. Like brag, like this is the workplace. We're literally there to talk about work. And there's this guy who's showing his three bottles of whiskey that he drank over the weekend. And like, he's like openly bragging about that. Like he's ha like, and they're all laughing and going, ha ha ha. Well, I drank two bottles of wine yesterday. And they're all like actively bragging about I won't say mediocrity because it's not that, but like, it's not like they've achieved something. They're bragging kind of about the opposite. It's almost like a cry for help. And he took it as a cry for help. And he privately said to a few of them, like, yo, are you doing okay? And they were like, I mean, not really, ha ha ha, but like, you know, I'm doing my part. And so like, there was a weird celebration, not weird, because I understand why it happened, but there was a celebration of like, being extremely comfortable and just staying at home and not doing anything and staying in your pajamas for five days at a time. And so there was me, someone who loves freedom. And a lot of you who were with the channel, you know what my journey during that time was like, because I, I was doing a video every single day to keep myself sane or a podcast every day to keep myself sane. For me, who was just desperate to go outside and, and have some freedom and, and live my life and be productive and push myself and grow and learn and all of that. It was very difficult. But for a lot of people who were like, great, now I have a great convenient excuse to keep being comfortable. It was like freeing for them. It was like oddly freeing to be told that you have to stay at home and live your comfortable life. And so, yeah, I completely understand what he's saying here, where he says, many people secretly enjoy 
mediocrity. And he wrote his articles, something like, I think this article was written like 10 or 11 years ago. So yeah, God, he would have had no idea what was coming with all the lockdowns and shit like that, but really great point there. So a day in the life of mediocrity, drinking beer, surfing the net, watching TV, bitching about job. Yeah. And there's other things that we do to, to be mediocre. It's not even mediocre. It's just like comfortable. Beating AA is like beating AA. So when he says AA, he's talking about approach anxiety, which is the anxiety that a guy might feel when he goes out to talk to women. And really that anxiety just applies to anything. Whatever your goal is, there's likely a lot of anxiety and fear that comes up when you think about working on that goal, right? So beating approach anxiety is like beating alcoholics anonymous. Long ago in this process will strip you down and make you confront your real issues, which is an article that he wrote. And I've reacted to that on my channel. That's on my channel. You can go and watch that. I wrote about how the otherwise simple process of walking up to the random hot girls and asking them out or trying to sleep with them will cause all your problems to surface and uncover how you really feel about yourself. And again, this applies to women too. This applies to whatever your goal is. The process of going for that goal and working on it really does uncover a lot of the insecurities and the limiting beliefs and all of that kind of stuff that's in your head. I like to say self-improvement is a form of therapy like self therapy, when you start working on a goal, like let's say you say, I want to just lose 20 pounds. A lot of people like naively, and it's not naive, it's like innocent and sweet. They're like, I'm going to lose my 20 pounds. And you're like, yeah, you will. But like, you're in for a roller coaster, like in, in a good way, in the most healing, beautiful possible way ever. But it's, it's likely for most people, not just going to be, oh, I just like lose some weight. And then there you go, I lost 20 pounds. It's like, you're probably going to have to deal with or you get to you get an opportunity to deal with the reason why you gained the weight in the first place. Like, did you not like yourself? Did you just prioritize other things? Do you need to build some boundaries and some self-love? Like a lot of that stuff comes up. And again, it's really beautiful. And it's like a form of self-therapy. So no matter what your goals are, like the process of, or the journey of going towards them and, and working on them and attaining them really does bring up a lot of insecurities. The fear, though it eventually dies, will challenge your soul. It is a direct reflection of how much of a man you are or aren't. It's like getting sober. It's just like getting sober. If you've spent a half decade or more under the influence and temporarily self-medicating your problems away, especially with hardcore drugs, it's raw and it's so true. Yeah. And that's kind of what I talked about before. Like a lot of the time when we're comfortable, we're self-medicating all of our insecurities, all of our thoughts, all of our limiting beliefs and all of that. We're just kind of like covering it up with Netflix, with YouTube, with Instagram, with porn, with video games, whatever your drug of choice might be. We're covering that shit up. And then when we go, okay, it's time to face this stuff. Now you don't have your tools of self-medication. Or maybe you use them a little bit, but like you're probably not going to lose weight while drinking a bottle of whiskey every day. Like you might have to cut down on the alcohol a little bit. You don't have to, you might choose to cut down on the alcohol a little bit. And so now you don't have your self-medication as much. And so you kind of have to face the things that you haven't been facing for a long time. That can be very raw. Our deepest unorthodox version of self-improvement surfaces your deepest feelings of anxiety, depression, low self-esteem, lack of confidence, regrets, self-doubt, insecurities, inferiority inferiority complex. And he goes on to read all these out. Basically what he's saying is like all the things that you haven't been dealing with and you've been doing your best. It's not bad that you weren't dealing with them. You were trying to get through life with the best tools that you had. And self-medication is a really useful fucking tool that a lot of people use. But a lot of this stuff, these, these things that you've covered out, now you have this beautiful chance, this beautiful opportunity to finally work on them and finally face them and go, do you know what? I've never really healed the fact that I was bullied in high school time to face that. You know, I said yes to a lot of people in my life and I never really went for what I wanted. And I just got myself into a marriage with a man that I'm not really into. And I've never actually asked myself what I want. Now it's time to face that and actually ask myself what I want. So it's a beautiful opportunity, but a lot of stuff does come up. It's like I said, it's very innocent that we often, and I do the same thing with every new goal. I don't do it anymore, but I, I, I did it for the first like five major goals that I have. You go into it completely innocent and you're like, I'm just going to make some money. And it's like, no, you're not like, yes, you are. But oh my God, you are going to deal with the fact that you haven't made money up until this point. You're going to deal with all the reasons why you haven't made money up until this point. Like I went through this journey myself. I'm still going through this journey. It's been a long journey with money for me, my body and fitness. Oh my God, like it's not, at least for me, just so simple as like, bro, just lose some weight and like lift some weights. 
lose some fat and lift some weights. It's like, no, there's a lot under the surface. My girlfriend Imogen, same thing. It's not just like, oh, lose weight. It's like, no, I've been bulimic since I was 13. I've used food to binge eat and self-medicate with, you know, since I was 13. I have a really wild relationship with food and I'm going to need to heal that. And so it's like, there's often a lot more stuff under the surface. Right now in the coaching program, there's a guy in particular who joined the program just saying, hi, I just want to get laid and have some sex. And yep, sure, we can help you with that. Beautiful. And all of the insecurities are coming up and he is facing them like an absolute boss. He is showing incredible, tremendous courage. But all of these things come up and I've said to him several times, that's kind of what this process is. Like sometimes you you think that a goal is just so simple. It's like, I'm just going to lose 10 pounds. I'm just going to earn an extra $500 a month. Like it looks really simple. And for a lot of us, it is simple. Like some of my goals have been really simple. I'll be very clear on that. And so it's not always complicated. I'm not saying you need to overcomplicate it, but a lot of the times you really get stuck in, you get started, you make these massive changes and you either hit a point where you're stuck or it's not even that you're stuck. It's as you go through this process, all of this shit comes up that you've been bottling up. It, it brews up and, and hits the surface and you go, oh, damn, I didn't realize that I was insecure about this. There's a guy in our coaching program right now who's you know, he came to the program wanting to work on his self-love and start a YouTube business and have a lot of sex. And he's done those three things. And my God, like he's done a lot of those things. I can't wait to have him if he's willing to. I can't wait to have him on the podcast to talk about it because he's done some amazing stuff. He recently just had a threesome and he was so unbelievably excited. It was amazing. And he's telling us the story of this threesome and he's so excited and he's telling us about all of the insecurity and jealousy and weird feelings that came up. And they're not weird, but like feelings that came up during this threesome with two other women. Like stuff that he didn't ever think would come up. Like, why the hell would you think that, oh, I'm going to feel insecure when I have sex with two women? It's like, well, you might. That stuff might be brewing under the surface. And he had weird feelings of like, not weird again, but he had feelings of what if these two women like each other more than me? What if they don't need me anymore? What if they, they dump me and they just go off together and live in like happy lesbian land without me? And like, yeah, like that stuff you didn't even know was under the surface. And it's a beautiful opportunity to heal some of those traumas that either we've inflicted on ourselves without meaning to, without meaning to, or other people have inflicted on us again, without meaning to, but we go through life a lot of the time with, and we're doing our best, but we often like bottle stuff up because that's a decent strategy. Bottling stuff up gets you through life pretty well. And then at some point when we start working on these goals, all of the things that we've bottled up, they now come out we have this opportunity to heal them and to work through them. So you know, as he says, get ready for it. It's like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And not always, again, sometimes you don't feel any of this, but like, yeah, you might feel a lot of this. So the people best equipped to deal with the coming storm already have most of their shit together. Yet cold approach or any big goals that you're going for are most appealing with the most fragile guys with the most problems. Yeah. Like, Stop and let's underline that point for a second. You are probably watching my channel because you have a lot of insecurities or you have a fragile self-esteem or you have like you went through some trauma. Like you're probably watching self-improvement content for a reason because you want to be better, right? You might be watching for other reasons, entertainment or something, but you're probably watching because you're not fully happy with where you are in life and maybe you don't have the tools to get yourself where you want to be. And so you're going through this like self-improvement journey as someone who might not have all the tools that like maybe like literally maybe average people or maybe some other people in society might have more tools to deal with life than you do. Like there's probably a reason you're watching the self-improvement content. And it doesn't mean like you're fucked up or something's wrong with you or any of that. But like I know myself, I didn't have the tools to navigate life. I had tried for a long time, but I ended up depressed, suicidal, went to jail for six months. You know, two relationships where the second one especially was like abusive and violent. And she was doing her best, but like there was violence in that relationship. And so I didn't have the tools to go through life. I didn't know what the fuck I was doing. I got to 30 years old or 28 years old. And I was like, I literally don't know what the hell I'm doing. Like what the hell? I have no freaking clue what I'm doing. And so I went into self-improvement. I was like, yo, can you just give me some tools? You'd say the same thing about someone who comes to me for coaching or someone who goes to a therapist. It's not that you're screwed up. It's just that you're, you, you're admitting I don't have the tools to navigate this situation or maybe my entire life. And I, I want to figure out some tools. And so you can see why people that would come to my content, you might be a little more insecure than the average person. You might have a, a few more things that you want to work through than the average person does. Like that's kind of 
the point. That's why you're here. So yeah, they literally have no idea what the hell they just got themselves into. And they often take a break or give up very quickly. Yeah. So he's saying when someone gets into this process of self-improvement, they often take a break or quit. That's exactly this article. So again, I'll leave a link to my article in the description. I will also leave a link to this good looking loser article, but in my article, I literally talk about that. I'm like, often we have no, you have no idea what you're getting into with self-improvement and you just think, oh, I'm going to lose some weight. And like, sometimes it's that simple, but a lot of the time it's like all of these things in this, you know, image here, not all of them, but some of them can come up. Yeah, so Mike is just a guy who was on the forums, I think, on this guy's forums. Uh, he discusses a three-month window in which 90% of guys will drop out or quit. Yeah, I kind of talk about that in my article. I talk about the fact that most people drop out in the first three months because that's when it's, like, challenging. That's when you're not necessarily getting a massive payoff because you don't know what you're doing. And so that's why I say, give yourself permission to suck. Like you really might suck in the first three months of any goal whatsoever. Like if it's going to the gym, it might be painful. You might hurt, you might hurt, you won't hurt yourself, but like you might have sore muscles afterwards. You might feel like an idiot. You might feel like you don't deserve to be there. You might feel like everyone's better than you. You might feel really insecure. Afterwards, you literally might not be able to get out of bed the next day because your muscles aren't used to working out. And you might be like, holy shit, why do my legs, why are they just so, like, I feel like my legs are made of like lead weight or something that might happen for the first week, for the first two weeks, sometimes even the first three months. And I promise you it gets better. And that was what I talked about in this article. I literally said, I believe I wrote it down the bottom, like something like, yeah, look, see, get better. It does like, just don't quit. Just hang in there. I believe in you. Like it's a very motivational, like article, but yeah, you will eventually move past that three month window. And it doesn't have to be a three month window. Sometimes it's less, sometimes it's slightly more, but most people do quit early because they're like, this is worse than when I was living my comfortable life. And it's like, yeah, but it will get better. Some will return only to drop out within the same window. Yeah. I've seen that a lot. He says, I was guilty of this two times in 7006 and 2007. So he's a time traveler, ladies and gentlemen, he's a time traveler. On that note, so he means 2006, obviously. His blog has so many spelling mistakes and grammatical errors, and that was part of the appeal for me. I liked that he didn't really care. He even wrote that in an article. He's like, I don't fix the mistakes because I want this to be raw and honest, and I don't want to be a perfectionist. That was him giving himself permission to suck, and I really liked that about him. He was very honest. I concur with his, with these numbers, his numbers, they're completely accurate. This is one of the reasons our approach anxiety program, which was just a program that they wrote to help you be able to talk to women in public, starts off with such laughably easy drills that I demand you do not skip within the first few weeks. You need to experience successful baby steps and moral victories if you have any chance of getting good at this stuff. I didn't realize he uses the word baby steps. I wonder if I got that from him. I don't know if I did. I think I got it from The Slight Edge, which is a book that I really like. But you know how I always talk about just take some baby steps. Yeah, that's what he's saying here. If you can just get yourself to just go for a walk for five minutes if you're trying to lose weight or if you're trying to talk to women, if you can just like smile at one woman today or just compliment one woman or start by talking to men if that's easier. Like you don't have to hit on them and say, hey, sexy little man, let me see that cock boy. Let me see that nice penis. But you know, you can just go up to men and be like, Hey bro, nice t-shirt. Hey bro, I love your beard. Hey dude, what's up? Hey, have you got the time? So you just start with some baby steps and then slowly increase from there. Otherwise, you'll just be another statistic. Be prepared for numerous temptations to stop or postpone talking to the bare minimum of 20 women a week or whatever it is that your goal is. There will always be a seemingly justifiable reason. I talked about that in my article, why most people quit self-improvement. I talked about the fact that like we often look for like logical reasons and we're like, no, I just don't have time. And it's like, no, you're just scared. Just say that. And then we can work on that. I don't know anyone like Scotty, who's another guy that sort of wrote or contributed to good looking losers articles. And by the way, Scotty has his own YouTube channel. His YouTube channel is just called Brian Harris. Just search for Brian Harris. And he's got a lot of like motivational content on their mindset content, particularly mostly about like sex and getting laid, but mindset stuff on there as well. Who left his house seven years ago to pick up girls and only returned home to fuck them or eating some protein yet. Yeah. Scotty was a guy, again, his YouTube channel is Brian Harris. He was a guy that went all in with his goals for sure. Literally, I don't know anyone as devoted or crazy as that. He's an outlier, a uh, 0.0000001% case that hit on 30 women a week for seven years straight. 
yeah, you don't have to be that committed. If you if you are that all in with whatever your goal is, like absolutely more power to you. I have been that obsessed with some of my goals and it's worked wonders. But then at the same time, I have also just taken baby steps with some of my goals. So don't feel like you have to go all in. The more you can commit and the more you can go all in, beautiful. But if you start that process by just taking some baby steps, that's beautiful too. So just listen to me on this. Your first 90 days is absolutely critical. Yeah. In other words, like if it feels difficult when you start working on a goal for the first like 90 days or the first whatever amount of time, like that is normal. Just hang in there. I promise you're doing a good job. It's okay if it feels worse for a little bit. Again, read my article. I literally talk about like what to do if it starts to feel a little bit worse for the first couple of weeks or months. Uh, when I revamp the approach anxiety program, my goal is to get that 90% dropout number down to about 67%. That's a very like I guess it's two thirds, isn't it? He's gone for 66.666% and rounded it up. I'm a nerd. <laughs> Perhaps wishful thinking though. Nine out of 10 guys aren't successful at anything in life and having sex with 20 or 30 random women a year is a game only played by the top 1% of guys. And if that goal has no appeal to you, fine. Whatever your goal is like. But nine out of 10 guys aren't reading this blog post right now. And that's a good point, yeah. Like they're busy being comfortable. Yeah, if you're watching this YouTube channel, I say this all the time. If you're watching my YouTube channel, you're probably going to have a really amazing life. You might not be there yet. Like that's a process that you can work on. But if you're even watching this, you're already like, I don't like to compare, but you're already in the, let's just say you're in the top 1% of society. Like you already, you already want, and it doesn't mean you're better than society, but you already want something like amazing. You're going to get it. So why mess with a good thing? Back to my point. Instinctually, and logically, your mind tries to keep your life as stress and pain-free as possible. Yes, that is how our minds are wired. We are hardwired for comfort, safety, security. We saw that in 2020 with lockdowns and masks and staying inside and all of that. That was everybody's like fear coming to the surface and saying, okay, I, I just got to be as like comfortable as possible. Frankly, your mind and body won't even want to go to the gym or healthfully exercise until you program it to. Yeah, that's a good point. To your brain, it makes no sense to face your demons. <laughs> When you can comfortably suppress them. Yeah, that's why most people self-medicate. There's a reason most people are flicking through Instagram and YouTube and TikTok and like just doing the most inane, insane, or they seem insane things. They're just sitting there self-medicating and like literally making themselves a zombie, willingly plugging themselves into the Matrix. Why? Because the Matrix is fucking comfortable. I think the one thing the movie, the Matrix movie gets really right. Okay. The one thing, there's lots of things. I really like that movie. But one of the things they get really right is when they start unplugging people from the matrix. Like I, th I think this is in the third movie when Neo is talking to the architect, he's having a conversation and he's basically saying, he basically says like, we are going to unplug people from the matrix, which in this case, you could say, you know, we're going to get people out of their, uh, their comfortable life. And we're going to throw them into self-improvement. They literally have a conversation where they're like, and what about the people that don't want to be unplugged? Okay. They can stay in the matrix. And so the same thing with self-improvement, like, you know, a lot of you have really big goals and an amazing mission or purpose for your life and all of these things you want to do. And you, you kind of at the start, and I did this too. A lot of you go on this quest where you're like, I have to save all of my friends and family. I have to like push them into self-improvement and you get resistance from lots of them. They're, they're basically like, fuck off and leave me to my comfortable life. In other words, fuck off and let me stay in the matrix. This is sweet, bro. Like in the first matrix movie, there's a, a character called Cypher, 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 Cypher. I always, I can never remember his damn name, Cypher. And he literally says, I want you guys, you know, he's been unplugged from the matrix or unplugged from his comfortable life. And he literally says, I want you to plug me back into the matrix and I don't want to fucking remember anything. That's what like a huge amount of people do. I talk about this in my article. Like a lot of people go running back to comfort and they go, fuck that self-improvement thing. That sucked. Like I had to face my demons. Fuck that. Another good example of this is Imogen, you know, my girlfriend had, was friends with this guy years and years and years ago. And this guy, she felt had always like suppressed his emotions and had a lot going on under the surface, but never really admitted to it. And this guy chose to take LSD, you know, a psychedelic and had this psychedelic experience where, and if you're not familiar with psychedelics, they very much open your mind and get you to face whatever it is that you've been resisting. Like very much, it makes you face, not your demons, but face some of the stuff that you haven't been facing up to. 
It's a really good, I've used it many times. I think I've had LSD something like 50 times. And each time I've used it as like a healing self-improvement, like self-counseling kind of thing to go, okay, what in my life am I currently ignoring? Like, what have I just pushed to the side and not dealt with? And so anyway, this guy, this friend of Imogen's, he took LSD. And afterwards, you know, a couple of days later, she said, how was it? And he goes, oh my God, it was like, no, it was really bad. And she goes, well, what do you mean? He goes, I wrote down during the LSD trip, I wrote down all of these things that like I hadn't been dealing with. Like, you know, I was sexually abused as a child and I've never told anyone that, you know, I was bullied in high school and I've never dealt with that. Like all of this stuff. And she was like, wow, this sounds like an amazing experience. Like all of this stuff has come up and now you can deal with it. And he goes, no, are you kidding me? Like, no, no. That was like crazy stuff in my head. No, I'm no, no. I think it was just the drug was making me crazy. And she's like, no, the drug like got you to face the things that you've been bottling up. Like, what are you talking about this? Like, this is a chance to now go to therapy or talk to me or talk to your friends or like do, do another LSD trip in a couple of months or something when you feel up for it, if you want to, it's not something that I would push someone to do, you know? And she's like, this is a beautiful experience. And he's like, no, 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 no. I'm not facing those ever again. Like, in other words, I'm running back to my fucking comfort because that was scary. And so that can happen. So yeah, he goes on to say, if you have time to read Good Looking Loser or watch my YouTube channel, your life is relatively comfortable. Even if you aren't overly privileged and often the source of most of your own anxiety. Yeah, we cause most of our own anxiety. We don't mean to, but we're doing our best. You probably live a comfortable life, provided that you don't live in some failed socialist utopia. Yeah. You might argue otherwise, citing that your job, you know, I don't love my job or boring social life, but overall, you know that your life is pretty comfortable. Yeah. We kind of invent some of our own problems and we don't mean to, like we're doing our best. Maybe I won't say that we invent them, but a lot of us are really freaking comfortable. You probably wouldn't be reading or watching my YouTube channel if you were really uncomfortable. You'd be going and fixing that discomfort. And some of you, you might be watching my YouTube channel to fix your discomfort. I hope you are. There's plenty of entertainment and material consumption to keep you from hitting rock bottom. Yep. Yep. Even more so. Remember, he wrote this article like 11 years ago. There was not like TikTok or any of that sort of shit. YouTube was like relatively small. Like, holy shit. He had no idea where that was going to go. Uh, which would otherwise really force you to be accountable for those hours that just seem to fly by. Yeah. The entertainment and porn and alcohol and everything else. It does kind of like, it's like plugging into the matrix. You can kind of forget about your discomfort or the things that you wish you had achieved, like that you want to achieve. You are just comfortable enough to do what ultimately amounts to nothing and be happy with your effort. Yeah, that's the average person. Yeah. And again, there's nothing wrong with the average person. But if you're watching this, you probably want a life that isn't average. In fact, that's the story of most people's lives. I believe that most people actually have a decent work ethic, but are lazy at the same time. Yep. This paradoxical life destroying blend ultimately destroys all their dreams one by one. Yeah, you kind of just give up on your dreams. Most people, it's not like their dreams just like, oh, I can't do that. It just kind of fades away over time as the years roll by. There's that really good quote. I can't remember who by it, but the average guy, the average man and it's anyone really. So the average person live, sorry, most men lead lives of quiet desperation. So most people lead lives of quiet desperation desperation. It's like they're desperate for something more, but they're quiet about that. They kind of just bottle that up and push it to the side and just live a nice, comfortable, safe life. That type of comfortable approach to life isn't going to cut it if you want to be on top and reap the benefits yet. Like if you guys and girls have goals that you want to achieve and big life dreams, you're probably not going to get there being super comfortable. Now, that doesn't mean that you have to be deeply uncomfortable. I did a video on my channel a while ago called You Don't Have to Suffer to Reach Your Goals. But I think you guys and girls know what we're talking about here. We're talking about like extreme comfort, like that the average person has, where their entire mission in life is to just only be comfortable. There's a really good YouTube channel that I like called Yes Theory. This amazing YouTube channel right here. And look at the description of their channel. You know, we believe that life's greatest moments and deepest connections exist outside your comfort zone. Literally, their, their brand is Seek Discomfort, like SeekDiscomfort.com. And their channel just is literally dedicated to them stepping out of their comfort zone and doing crazy stuff and meeting people, meeting strangers and like really, really, really pushing themselves out of their comfort zone. So, you know, the amazing stuff that comes in life, like there's always something beautiful if you can push through that discomfort and move towards something that maybe, yeah, it might be a little bit uncomfortable for a little while. I promise that eventually it gets more comfortable. Like at the start, if your goal is to have sex with women, it might be very uncomfortable for you to go up to women and be like, hi, how are you going? That might be fucking terrifying. That might be the most uncomfortable thing you ever do in your entire life. It was for me at that point in time. 
at this point, coaching is the most uncomfortable. It's not uncomfortable anymore. But when I first started coaching, that was the most terrifying, uncomfortable thing I ever did. Like, oh, holy shit. And so if you push through that, I promise you get to a point where that becomes the new like norm. It becomes nice and comfortable. You get much, e much better at it, but you might have to push through some initial discomfort. Pour con claw, which I believe is like French or Italian or something for the end or in conclusion. It's probably in conclusion, isn't it? Being scared and walking up to hot girls one by one or whatever it is that you're doing to work on your goals will sober you up to reality really quickly. Every insecurity, issue or problem, past or present will surface if you continue to proudly, proudly resist fear. And I go even further than that. I don't resist fear. I see fear as like a, a, a helpful thing. Like fear is there to keep you safe. Fear serves a purpose. You're not like irrationally fear. Your fear is just your brain or your biology trying to keep you nice and safe. I like to be grateful for the fear. I'm like, hey, I appreciate that, Mr. Fear. Like, thank you for trying to keep me safe. That's beautiful. And then I run towards the fear. So my idea is like run towards fear rather than resist it. And that YouTube channel that I just showed you, you know, again, yes theory, there's this like seek discomfort, like run towards that discomfort, like seek it out, like actively seek it out. That's why I say run towards fear because there's almost always something beautiful on the other side of that. The comfortable life, perhaps even one that you've admirably earned. Yeah, like a lot of people earn the comfortable life. There's nothing to be sh ashamed of. Like, I hope that none of this comes across as me shaming someone who has a comfortable life is the same reason you'll never be anything but, as in never be anything but comfortable. We've applied it to putting together a sex life so you can sleep with two or three hotties a week or whatever it is that your goal is. But it's really just a metaphor for life. Yeah, see, even he knew at the time. He's like, all of this shit applies to like more than just sex. His his website is a sex website. But oh my God, like I swear to God, I've learned more philosophies from Chris from Good Looking Loser than like anyone else. To quote a wise man, it won't be a lack of opportunity, a lack of work ethic, and won't even be a lack of talent that will kill most of your dreams. It's the highly comfortable, mediocre life that you are accustomed to. Me. Oh, that's him. He wrote that. Yeah. <laughs> Cute. That made, that made me laugh. This, also, this next one's also by him. In this case, it won't be a lack of sex appeal, social freedom, swag factor, or confidence that will prevent you from having all the sex that you want. It's the highly comfortable, mediocre life that you're accustomed to. Me again. Your life is comfortable. You don't have to do anything heroic to survive. Yep. The average person really doesn't. And that's why you are stuck in this never ending quagmire. You get it now. When mediocrity is intolerable, success is inevitable. So what to do? So now you know why most dreams don't come true. Ha, ladies and gentlemen. So there's a meme on my channel that whenever I say, all right, I'll finish up now. I then keep talking for another half an hour. What did good looking loser just do? Ladies and gentlemen, poor conclude, which means in conclusion, Oh, let me write some more. Oh, yeah, you guys and girls can't say that I'm the only one that does it. <laughs> so now you know why most dreams don't come true. And that's half the battle. You have to be hungry and more importantly, stay hungry. Try your best to embrace our concepts of nothing in moderation by anything, by any means necessary and inquire, sorry, acquire an authentic disdain for the comfortable majority. I'd go, f I'd, 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 I'd go further than that. And I'd say like, I don't think you have to have a disdain for the majority of people who are comfortable. I think you can love the average person who's nice and comfortable. I don't think we have to use like disdain. However, if disdain and pride and you saying that you're better than other people, if that helps you take action, I'm all for that. Like go and fucking do that. That's beautiful. So it's not, it's not that it's wrong. I'm not saying it's wrong to have disdain for the comfortable majority. Like if that helps you fucking go for it, I would just, or part of my mission is to eventually, hopefully get you to a point of like love and acceptance. And you're like, Hey, the average person is just comfortable and that's why they do it. They're not bad or stupid or pathetic, but yeah, whatever helps use it. Personally, I don't really care how you do it when you start. That's literally what I just said in the sentence, talking about something different. I was like, I don't really care if you got to use disdain, use that. Maybe insecurity is your number one motivator. Maybe validation is your number one motivator. Like we just said, maybe pride in you saying that you're better than the average person. Maybe that's your number one motivator. Cool, use that. Like, great. That was one of my motivations at the start, by the way. I was literally like, I'm better than the average person. I'm better than other people. And like, I didn't believe it at the time, but I kept saying that to myself until I did believe it. And then eventually I moved past it and let go of it. And I was like, I'm not better than other people. I just, I'm doing something that they're not doing. They probably think they're better than me because they have a nice, comfortable life. And they're like, Andy, I'm better than you. So I don't really think there is any better with than anyone else. It's just a story that we make up. Maybe you're one of the lucky ones who hits rock bottom. 
I definitely was. That's a big motivation for me. It's funny because like every now and then someone will say like, oh, Andy, you're lucky because you're tall and that helped you with women and helps you with friends and stuff. Or you're lucky because you're white or you're lucky because you're this. There's a couple of things that people never say that I'm lucky for. And I guess they just don't know. Like no one's ever said you're lucky because you hit rock bottom. But I definitely am. That definitely like really fucking helped. Like me literally going to prison or being arrested in the first place and like potentially being like going to prison that was my rock bottom and like i'm very lucky that i hit that rock bottom and so there's lots of like things that i can say i'm lucky and i'm grateful for another one that nobody ever points out is um that i'm intelligent and i mean that in the most humble way possible funny how people get very insecure when intelligence is mentioned but nobody ever points out like oh you're lucky because you're intelligent even though that's like probably the biggest thing that has ever helped me entire in my entire life with every goal, obviously intelligence is like the one fucking metric that most people don't ever like point out as like, you're lucky. They'll point out everything like, you know, feminism, for instance, will point out like you're a man. So you have the patriarchy. So you're lucky or people will go, you're rich. So it's easy for you. Or you were born into a wealthy family. So it's easy for you. You're tall. You're athletic. You're good looking. You're this, like all of that. Nobody ever really says like you're intelligent. So it's easy for you. I don't know if that's like the Dunning-Kruger effect going on. What I mean by that, if you're not familiar, is like, if you're not intelligent, you almost don't know that you're not intelligent. You, you almost can't visualize how much more intelligent somebody else might be than you. Because if you're not intelligent, you don't know what you don't know. Like I sitting here right now, I don't know how much smarter, for instance, like Stephen Hawkins was compared to me. Like I literally can't fathom how his mind works. I can only imagine how my mind works and maybe people who are less intelligent than me, but I can't fathom someone more intelligent than me because I can't imagine what I can't imagine. I don't know what I don't know. And so, yeah, complete fucking side tangent here, but that's a weird one that no one's ever said to me, like you're intelligent. And I've never heard that said to anyone else either that I've ever worked with. Like all of my coaching clients are generally speaking, pretty intelligent. None of them have ever been told like, oh, you're lucky that you were born intelligent. So that's a weird one that like flies under the radar, but whatever, complete side tangent here. Uh, it doesn't really matter, you know, what your motivation is. If it motivates you, keeps you disciplined and accountable, it's all good in my book. It's whatever makes you tick. Keep an accountability log in our forum, and he doesn't have a forum anymore, but you can always join my coaching program. One of the things that I get people to do in the coaching program is post every single day and basically keep like a log as part of the coaching program, and then we'll obviously coach them as well. Uh, avoid good looking loser at all costs if it helps. And I've said that I literally started the podcast by saying that, and I got that mindset from good looking loser because he used to say all the time on his blog, you're like, if it helps you, don't read my content. Like literally, if it's better for you, I would prefer you not to read my content. So same here. Like if it helps you to just never watch my YouTube videos ever again, if that genuinely helps you, please do that. He goes on to say, I don't directly teach motivation. I don't know how funny because he's one of the most motivating people that I know. If you aren't motivated to acquire endless streams of pussy and money by the time you're in your mid thirties or whatever your goal is, it doesn't have to be having sex. Lots of you women you know, like 40% of this audience is women. You're probably not desperate to get endless streams of pussy, are you? Actually, leave a comment. No, I'm genuinely curious. Are there any women out there who are like, yeah, actually I'm lesbian or bisexual and I am just here to get some pussy? Like, <laughs> I, I joke with Imogen about this all the time. I've never in my entire life heard any woman ever say like, I'm just trying to get some pussy or I'm just trying to get some fucking dick. Like women, at least every woman that I've ever met doesn't really talk like that. But I do want to meet a woman like that. So if you're a woman like that, please fucking leave a comment. I just want to meet one woman who's like, yo, I'm just here to get some fucking dick, son. I just want to get that fucking mad dick. God, I want to meet a woman like that. So basically this last paragraph is him saying, if you aren't motivated to go for your goals, there's nothing that I can tell you that's going to convince you to really go after it. If I think of something to say, I'll tell you though. So basically he's saying like, you know, you either want your goals or you don't. If you do want your goals, welcome to my website. And I guess welcome to my YouTube channel. If not, that's okay. Like keep being comfortable. And at the point where you're no longer comfortable, you'll change something. I'll make something very clear, like nowhere on my YouTube channel or my blog or any of my content. Am I telling you that you have to do self-improvement? I'm not trying to guilt trip you into it. I'm not trying to shame you or any of that kind of stuff. If you don't want to improve your life, if you like your life, beautiful. I love that you know what you want. I love that you know what you like. So like I said, I am super grateful to Chris from Good Looking Loser. The man absolutely changed my life for the better in so many different ways. I can't even count all of them. And I will always be eternally grateful to him for that. So his website is down at the moment, like I said, but I do have an archive of this particular article. I will link to that. 
I also have, I will link to my own article of why most people quit self-improvement. I will link to the Yes Theory YouTube channel if you want to go and watch these guys seeking discomfort and running towards the things that scare them. And my God, have they done some amazing things that scare them. And if you're a little scared right now and you would like some help, I offer coaching. We have an amazing hardcore coaching program. Like I said, if you sign up in the next, I think it is four days. Yeah, next four days. So within the next four days and you pay in full, you will get 18 weeks instead of the usual 12 weeks. On top of that, we have lifetime access to our private Discord server, which is like all of the coaching clients that I've ever worked with. So you're going to get to network with every single amazing hardcore person who's into their goals and you know achieving amazing big things basically everyone i've interviewed on this channel is in that discord group so we would love to have you you got four days only do not miss out as always ladies and gentlemen go out there and crush your goals and a really big thank you to chris i, I i've said this so many times i've even messaged him and said this and we've had some short conversations the guy really did change my life and for a blog that was supposedly only about, you know, let's getting lots of pussy, let's get lots of pussy. It's like, nah, the dude had some like really deep, really beautiful concepts, just like this one, you know, that most people seek comfort and maybe that's what I was doing too. And his blog really helped me to move out of that and move towards living a more authentic, amazing, beautiful life. So big thank you to Chris. I will always be super grateful.